I'm Lindsay Ekma. I'm here with the Center for Instructional Innovation. Um, we are here with some of the pieces for our assembly of the 3D printed face shields that we are doing uh, as a task force for the hospital. We've been tasked to make a thousand. Um, we do have 200 that are being donated by Georgia Southern. Um, so the elastic has been donated from the hospital supply chain. Um, I take this elastic, I cut two holes in it, I use clear nail polish to seal in the seam. Um, this is for this particular 3D printed band. This is by Prusa Printers, which is an open source file. So anybody with a 3D printer can print this. Um, it has little notches. So we custom hole punch. What we have is PC, uh, PVC plastic sheets that have been donated from our printer, Ronda Powell. And then once we have the holes that are aligned here, there's four of them, we will actually, with a little bit of tension, we'll apply it on the headband. So the tension is what helps to keep them on. Um, once the headband is all set up and upside down, I will apply what is called the bottom reinforcement piece. Um, we can usually print about 20 of these at a time. Um, the larger uh, and smaller versions of the Prusa printer, we print at usually around 75% and also 100% on the printing beds. Um, so we also have um, at Augusta University version, this is Bill Gray's design. Um, this is something that he developed. And you can see he, instead of doing notches on the end for elastic or rubber bands is what our first version, our first prototype had, um, he has come up with a version of cutout holes. So a cinch strap design. So we are able to use Velcro for this. This is an adjustable Velcro band. We are able to use string um, and we are able to use elastic. Um, so we are now having all of our 3D printers um, in this collaborative effort, roughly 10 to 14 printers working on this design.